Hello, gang. Just wanted to inform you of what I'm working on right now. So this is, if you watch the channel, you know that I have brand new cases. Uh, I got them in an estate sale. Uh, this is a 266, 268, 272, 61 Husqvarna cases. I found them at an estate sale. Got them for like, I don't know, 15 bucks. And, uh, uh, I think that they are OEM. I don't know for sure because I've heard tell of the Chinese stuff still saying made in Sweden. But these things definitely say made in Sweden. Let's see if you can see it. Mm, can't really. Yeah, there you go. You can make that out. Made in Sweden. So, I think they're OEM cases. Um, we've got a meteor, uh, what, what is it, 50 millimeter, so a meteor uh, pop-up piston, and I decided to go with this. This is an old cylinder I had. This is a 268 XP cylinder, all right? It's got a couple fins broken off the top there, so I made sure I, I'm, I didn't do any machine work because I don't want this thing to produce high compression not really I mean it's got a pop-up I know but um, I'm running a 101 exhaust 77 on the intake and the transfers are at 124 take a look at the port work there whoa hey now don't turn that on where'd my light go all right there's the uppers the intake, I raised it as well to increase the um, volume. And I smoothed out the exhaust nice. Widened it up a little bit. We got a nice chamfer on the um, port there. So, with no machine work, I didn't make that, combu that combustion chamber real tiny. And at 101, even with a pop-up piston, it shouldn't get too high of compression. But let me tell you, without the uh, base gasket, without the base gasket, it uh, um, I had to clean up the squish a little bit. Okay, so I guess, see up in there in the chamber, you can see where I cut on it. Basically, the, it had just a little ring, uh, and there was a lot of carbon buildup. So I got that off of there, and it's at a perfect 20,000 squish. And we're going to hope for the best. Um, I did nothing to the lower transfers. I'm sure that people will say that I should. But um, we'll see, put it together and see how she runs. And then I believe with this saw, I am going to just do... Um, we'll have a, a waffle. Right? A raffle. And uh, basically... On the video, whenever I run this thing, the video, uh, I will announce that I'm going to be raffling it off. And uh, if you put in $5, that's one ticket. If you put in $20, that's five tickets. And, um, and we'll give people a chance to win this. The, the opportunity to win this is because I am big time surprise here <laughs> I am saving up my duckies to build a dyno um, I I might have to push the 60 cc challenge back to November because it was going to be in September but then we got October is saw fest and uh, so it puts things really tight and then how great would it be if I could build the dyno and then dyno all the saws uh, for that 60 cc challenge so yeah, so the, the whole point of this saw is to raise funds to build a dyno. And you're gonna be seeing me selling off a lot of my saws as well to fund building a dyno. And, uh, but yeah, I'm all in on it. I'm going to do it. I don't know how long it'll take me, but hopefully I can get it done within the next few months. And, uh, and then, yeah, like I said, have it ready and, uh, um, for the 60cc challenge. 
But yeah, that's what I'm working on. That's the port numbers. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll do probably about a six degree timing advance on it. And we'll see how she runs. Uh, it's gonna have a black top from a Husky 61. And um, nearly every part will be OEM. There will be some stuff like the coil. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to get a aftermarket coil. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, I got, you know, the, the oil and fuel knobs I might have to get aftermarket. Maybe even the tank. I don't know. We'll see. But this is what I'm working on, and I'm excited to see how it comes out because I've never ported a 266, 268, 61, 272, any of those. I've never done it. And I hear that you can, it's easy to go too far on the intake. Uh, because they're so big and, and there's not a lot of volume in the case anyways and stuff. And so hopefully 77 is not too far. I was aiming for uh, 76 on the intake, but we'll see how it goes. Ciao for now. I forgot to mention that it has, for one, the reason why I don't want high compression is because of those broken fins on the top cover right high compression creates heat and um, i want this thing to still run cool with those fins broken off i've ran shit with broken fins before and i've noticed absolutely no difference whatsoever <laughs> so i have no fear i don't feel like i'm wasting my time building this just because it has a couple fins broken off i like i said i i've, I've just never noticed any difference at all <laughs> but uh, 101 on the exhaust and um, uh, no machine work whatsoever. It shouldn't produce more than about 165, 170 pounds of compression. That, and that's max, you know. Uh, I, at least I, I'm thinking, I don't know. I've never built one of these things before. So, but, um, but I didn't cut any material out of there. So it all leads to, it'll probably be fine. And, um, uh, the other thing that I forgot to mention too is it has a brand new crank in it. This is a Tecomec crank. Got a killer deal on this thing. It was on sale on HL Supply. You know how they do. They, they decide they're not going to carry something anymore, and so they just drop it and drop it and drop it until you just got to buy it. I think I got that thing for 10 bucks, And it's a perfect crank, no issues. And it's got brand new crank bearings as well. Of course, brand new crankcase gasket. The bottom end is brand new on this thing. Uh, SKF bearings and um, should be uh, should come together and be a really nice little saw. Um, we'll see.